Okay, so this is the Hauke Antelope Pro cargo bike. And um, this, they call this a cargo bike, but it kind of is a, basically a step through fat tire bike that has a rear rack. When I think of cargo bike, I think of something with like a really long wheelbase, but this is a very um, normal wheelbase, so it handles very, very easily. And you can carry some cargo stuff, but uh, there's a couple of things that they could do to make it a, a real cargo bike, which we'll talk about later on in the video. But anyway, bike comes very well packaged. Um, it has two batteries that you see me taking out of there, and it has a 750 watt uh, rear hub motor and 25 amp hour batteries. Um, it's divided up into two batteries, and I think it's more like 24 amp hour because the first battery pack is like 11 and a half amp hours, and the second one is 12 and a half amp hours. So if you add that together, that's probably like 24 amp hours. But this is pretty standard. Um, you just put, you just have to take off the uh, stem handlebar bracket. Here we are taking that off. You put the handlebar on, and screw those in. Then you got to put the front wheel on and um, then put the fender on and the uh, light on. The light is quite good and the uh, batteries come in together. Oh, there's one that's under the frame and then one that goes behind the seat post. And then after that, you're, you're good to go. The bike comes with two separate chargers because the batteries need to be charged separately. They take the same plug, so you can usually just plug one. Uh, you could use one charger and plug it into one battery, and then when that's done, plug it into the second battery. Or you can use both chargers simultaneously, but it comes with two chargers. It has metal pedals, which I really appreciate, and um, uh, pretty pretty easy to put together. Um, if you if you know anything about bicycles, if you need some help, you can definitely take it to a local bike shop, and they shouldn't have any issues doing um, doing that. Um, the seat is pretty comfortable and it has a lot of adjustment and the, the website says you can use it from five foot one to six foot eight. That's probably fairly accurate. I'm 5'11 and there's a lot of room on e either side uh, to make it work. The fenders um, are going in now and here's the f uh, front light, uh, which is pretty easy. It comes with its own tool set, which uh, works out pretty well. The website claims that it has like 65 to 80 miles of range, which I think is a gross overestimation, but that's for every uh, e-bike company, they grossly overestimate how much range it gets. Um, so let's take it out for a spin. And this is a really steep hill uh, in my town. It is a 10% grade and I'm going up just on throttle alone. And it kind of bogs down to about 11 miles per hour and then pulls up 11 miles per hour. That's pretty good. If you, I, I've taken it up this hill with pedaling and with pedaling a moderate amount, you can easily climb at 22, 23 miles per hour, which isn't a problem. This bike is a little bit slower than the other two bikes. The other two bikes will cruise around um, 28, 27 to 28 miles per hour on flat land. That's the Engwe and the um, Vetania bike. Uh, this one wants to cruise on flats about 24 miles per hour. I mean, it will give you, the, the motor does assist you all the way up to about 30, but the amount of assist drops off around the mid 20s. So I think it's not a, a motor issue because the motor does pull uh, fairly hard. It doesn't launch as hard as the other two bikes either. Um, but I kind of like it. It's very gradual. It's more controllable and the speed different isn't that big of a deal. I wish that the uh, the the bike was geared higher. I don't really know why they put seven um, speeds on this thing and have it geared down so low. There's really no need to gear it down that low unless, of course, I guess if you run out of batteries and you have to climb hills with zero assist, you might appreciate the lower gears. But really, I have I, I always just leave it on the highest gear, and it's not high enough. I wish that the um, the gearing went f uh, much higher. So I think a, a larger chain ring would help this out quite a bit. Um, but it's very comfortable to ride, and um, works very well. And you see here, I'm going downhill, and on throttle, it wants to go maybe 27, 28, and I'm going downhill. The um, it says that its top speed is 28, 
but I think that's 28 on a slight downhill. On the flats, it will go maybe mid-20s. But that's that's probably fast enough for most uses. And as a cargo bike, uh, it works out. Um, that's plenty fast. Okay, let's look at some uh, details of the bike. So you turn it on by pushing this uh, middle button. Okay, here we go. There we go. Uh, so on the top right... You'll see on the top left, you see the battery on the top right. That gives you how many watts it's putting out and the time. And that's the amount of pedal assist. You can go up to five. So it has five levels of pedal assist up and down there. And then it gives an odometer here. So you see I've put in about 90 miles on this bike. It's got a twist throttle right there. And um, you can see that with no resistance, if I'm, if I'm just uh, twisting the throttle, um, it goes up to 30 so it will assist you to 30 but you see that the wattage uh, goes to like 70 watts so the watts go way down so I think it's a controller issue if the controller was programmed differently it, it could give you a thousand watts at 30 miles per hour which definitely would pull to that um, probably it would probably easily pull to 30 miles per hour on the flats if the controller was programmed a little differently it has a temperature sensor which is interesting I don't know why you really need that on a bike but um, you see it's 53 degrees. It's got a little bell, which is a fun feature for neighborhood, um, you know, tooling around the neighborhood. It's got this basket in the front that attaches um, via the rear wheel. And here's a re the rear rack. Um, the rear rack um, would be better if you could put a very large basket on the thing. Uh, as it stands, you can put that small baskets in the front. You could also put it in the back. Um, but it doesn't, uh, it's not great as a cargo carrier because the basket is way too small. And then, uh, as we come up to the front here, you see that there are two, um, batteries. There's a battery behind the rear and, um, it requires two different keys to take this out. Even though it's the same bike, it requires two different keys, which makes me think that they source the batteries from two different suppliers that are just commodity batteries that um, are probably these suppliers are supplying it to several other companies. So here's a plug on this side to charge that battery. Um, and then there's a plug on, see, the, there's one plug here. And then the other plug is right here. And they use the same plug, and again, the bike comes with two chargers, so you could charge both batteries simultaneously. Okay, so, and also, so you see, there comes two different sets of keys. So one key works the front battery, and that's obviously from a different supplier, and you take it out like that, and it's replaceable. And this looks like a very standard battery I've seen on other e-bikes. If you look at this, it has 11.8. Um, Eight, six amp hours so there's 11.6 amp hours in the frame here and then you just, you just lock it into place there then if you use the other battery uh, other key then you can unlock this one behind the seat post so you put it in there twist and then it pulls out from the bottom and this one has a 12 0.5 amp hours. So if you if you add the two together, it's actually more like 24 amp hours, not 25 amp hours, as is um, suggested on their website. So it's one amp hour off. This bike is currently going for about 15.99, and there's a coupon code below for 50 dollars off. Um, and so I think that's a really good deal. It's a very well made bike. You can see the welds are very good along the frame. Um, the plate that holds the rear battery is just is um, placed on it has mechanical um, disc brakes rather than hydraulic disc brakes but the brakes work great they work fine um, they stop very well and there's no issues with them it comes with a bafang motor and that is kind of a well-known brand so it's not their own brand it's they they're getting it from this company and so i think it's a very strong high quality motor um, and of course the metal pedals are, are a nice touch and then the central part right here, it kind of makes it look like it's a mid-drive motor system, but I believe this is where the controller is housed. It's not a mid-drive, it's a rear hub drive motor. Bike is 
perfect for um, a quick grocery run. My wife asked me to pick up some bread, and so instead of taking it in the car, I took this. And you can hear what the motor sounds like. And this is on a slight uphill, so it's going about 21 miles per hour. Okay, so what do I like and dislike about this bike? Okay, first, I like that this is the one time that I think having a fat bike actually makes sense. In general, I'm not a big fan of the fat tire bikes. They're very heavy and the rolling resistance is really high. And um, I just don't feel like the trade-off is worth it. Some people really like the look of it. It does make the bike much more comfortable to ride. And of course, if you're going over sand or loose stuff, the, the fat tires are gonna be helpful, especially like um, if you're doing snow or sand, that kind of stuff. But for most instances, I just don't feel like the weight and the rolling resistance is worth a payoff. However, on a big bike like this that's meant for carrying cargo, I think it makes sense. It does, um, it's a good use for a, a fat tire bike in my opinion. Okay, this I think is a really nice look. I don't know if this is practical or not, but they've cut out little holes in the, um, in the rim here, I think to make it lighter. Um, I'm not sure that going for lightness is what they were going for because the bike is very heavy anyway, but I think it looks nice. Um, you, can f you can feel the, t the inside lining, the rim, the rim tape basically, and um, it's quite tense. So I hope this is not a problem, and I don't think it is, but I think it's a cool look. The brakes are really good. Um, I love that it has a basket in the front. The basket is very, very useful. See, it has these little bolts that put the basket in. I'd like it if the basket was a little bigger, in fact. Um, they have these baskets that are kind of like open-ended in the front that you can, um, uh, you can like, like add things that stick out more. I think those kinds of baskets would be cooler. Um, these lights are really good. And the range is amazing. So, about, you know, about 43 miles at highest boost going as fast as we can so that's great and it's a very comfortable bike and I think it looks good and it's built very solidly it feels solid there's no creaks um, the welds are really nice um, they look like they're well done okay now what do I wish was different about this bike um, one thing right here when the shocks compress all the way, if you hit a big bump, this basket will hit this light and make it flip down like this. And then you'll have to flip it back up. Uh, it's not a huge deal, and bumps big enough to do that are pretty rare. But um, if they would have made this a little lower or positioned this um, basket a little higher, just one inch, I think, would have made a difference. And you would have to never deal with that. Two... Um, it is a little annoying that you have to charge it twice. Th this charge port and then uh, the charge port over here. So you have to charge it twice. Now, like I said, they include two chargers. So you can plug in two places and charge it simultaneously. But it would be nice if they just had one charge port that charged both batteries. It's, it's a minor, minor inconvenience, but I wish that they would have changed that. Um, I wish the gearing was a little different. This chain ring, if they made it a little bit bigger, you could pedal and assist it up to 30. Um, it is a little slower than the other bikes, but that doesn't bother me too much. Um, I really like the kickstand. That's another thing I forgot to mention. The biggest thing that I wish that they would change about this bike is to really commit to it being a cargo bike. I think they should have made this platform a little longer and um, instead, you see, you can, you can mount this basket, you can mount it right here, here. But that's not very much cargo carrying capacity. They should put a huge basket on here and um, that would make it a real cargo bike. That's the one thing I wish they would do. And I think they could still do that. If they would just manufacture a large basket that bolts down right here, that would make it perfect. I think that, that one change, if there's two things I could change about it, I would make a giant basket for the back and I would increase the size of this chain ring in the front. That's pretty much it. If, the, if you did that, this would be a really, really kind of a perfect cargo bike. 